Hey everybody, Mark Agnese here for Gibson TV. Today I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Now everyone knows Nashville is known as Music City. No company has been more instrumental in shaping the sound of Nashville than Gibson Guitars. Now whether you're picking on a banjo or mandolin, strumming an acoustic or wailing on the iconic Les Paul, Gibson's been making the finest stringed instruments in the world for over 127 years. And it all starts right here. Let's go check out how these guitars are made right here at Gibson USA. I'm here now with my dear friend and Gibson's master luthier, Jim DeCola. What's Hi. happening, buddy? This is quite the factory. Lots going on here. Tell me a little bit about how Gibson Guitars started. Gibson guitar started in 1894, right? When uh, Orville Gibson, you know, made his first guitar and got some partners to actually start a formal company, right? And over the years, uh, you know, the company has evolved. Originally, he was making a lot of uh, mandolin-inspired instruments and mandolins and guitars built in that mandolin and violin kind of construction. So because of that, that whole archtop guitar thing was an evolution of that. So Gibson invented the archtop jazz box guitar. We're here at Gibson USA in Nashville. What, yeah. what does this factory focus on? USA is the high volume electric solid bodies and ES models. Here we have some of the Les Pauls and some other bodies as we receive them from the rough mill which is across the parking lot. So this is what a Les Paul body looks like when we receive it here. Here we have an ES body that's getting ready for binding. So this is where we do all the binding operations. So we start out by machining that channel around the rim and that's where that binding will sit in, apply the heat adhesive and then start that wrapping process. So we take this canvas rope and wrap it all around that body to hold that secure. What are some of those roles that really take a significant like apprenticeship to get to get on the floor? The, the most significant would be scraping the binding. That that's, takes an incredible amount of skill and finesse. Wrapping the binding on the guitar bodies, hand rolling necks, neck fitting the neck to the body. All of those are probably the pinnacle of the craftsmanship. All of those tasks I just mentioned take a minimum two months to train someone to do those properly. Wow. And then when they're, when they're wrapped, they come hang here to dry? Yeah, they'll typically dry for about three hours. In the case of the ES, we have the binding on top, we'll unwrap it, apply do it, it again. to the bottom yeah. and do it again, yeah. Les Paul, like we have here, same process, but it only gets the binding on the top. And that binding will stick up a little proud of that surface, on, on this surface and on the side. So when it's unwrapped and dry, then we'll take it to a stroke sander and sand that smooth. So as you can see, it's just a big belt sander. We'll take the Les Paul body, put it in the sander on this moving tray. So again, if somebody pushes a little too hard on that top, you start to lose the contour. So this yeah. is another one of those jobs that's probably not anybody on the line can just walk in and do, right? That's right. It, it seems simple, but things can go wrong really quick. You know, there's a lot of this handwork that goes into our guitars. At the rough mill, we do that rough machining with the big CNC machine, but it can only get it so close as you see. And this is why we need to have the skilled craftsmen to be able to do this kind of work. How long does it take to make a guitar here? From like, it's raw wood to it's getting put into a case and put back into the, into the warehouse. A Les Paul, as we know it and love it, is standard. Gloss finish, maple top, book binding. match, binding, yeah. all that, that's probably 12 to 14 days. And then at ES, you know, you have the additional construction time in the body, double bound body, that's probably gonna be 14 to 16 days. So that's still everything that goes on that's very, very quick. Two weeks from a log yeah. to a finished guitar in the case, ready for somebody to pick it up. It's absolutely yeah. amazing. So after guitars come out of color prep where we do the final sanding and wood filling yeah. to prepare them for finishing. Guitars enter finishing, they get their base coats to prepare them for the color coats. And the base coat is just a, a clear sanding sealer, lacquer sanding sealer. And everything we do at Gibson is lacquer, genuine nitrocellulose lacquer. We feel very strongly about that and that kind of defines what a Gibson is. It just has a, a, a patina that you can't get with poly finishes. 
aesthetically. And then sound-wise, it's a much thinner finish, so it's not gonna uh, hamper the resonance, which even on a solid body, as you know, can affect the sound. So here we're gonna look at a sunburst getting shot. He's gonna start out by spraying that first yellow, you know, uh, antique kind of color for the base. Then he's gonna follow up. In this case, it's a honey burst. So he'll come back with that shader and he's gonna do that sunburst all around the perimeter. And the sunburst, incidentally, was a Gibson innovation. Really? A lot of people take that for granted, but Gibson came up with the sunburst. How many people do you guys have here that are trained to shoot a sun? I mean, there's so many sunbursts. Yeah, there's a lot guitars. of sunbursts. How many people actually can shoot that finish? Right now, we, we actively have about four to six that do it regularly. We have a few people in training. That's why I say four to six. Four key people and a couple in training. But uh, that's a lot of guitars for them to spray and a lot of responsibility because it's not just that muscle memory going around the perimeter of the guitar to get that sunburst on, but they have to know what that color is supposed to be and their eyes have to be in tune to know how to compensate for the variance in the color of wood. You might have a maple top on one that's a little lighter or a little darker and they have to know how to maybe lean in and, or pull back or whatever the case may be. So there's a lot of that responsibility that falls on them. Is it a prerequisite that you have to be a guitar player to work here? Certain jobs where you absolutely have to be a guitar player. And that would be like a final inspector because you have to be able to play that guitar or an adjuster because again, you have to play the guitar. And, and a lot of our uh, people here, you know, can cycle through and cross train and and after they've been in a you know, department for a given time, they may aspire to learn a different skill and you know, they can kind of grow that way. So uh, we have a lot of people here that, uh, you know, dozens and dozens of people that have been here over 20 years and uh, you know, many dozen over 30 and you know, a select uh, maybe half a dozen over 40, 45 years. Wow. So there's a lot of great heritage here. Now, if you've been working here 40 years, do they take care of those, those particular employees oh, yeah. with something special? Yeah. We have uh, a 20-year guitar. So when you make that 20-year milestone, you can get a Les Paul Supreme, which is kind of the top of the line guitar here. So Mark, after guitars come out of finishing, they go to buffing. That's where the finish gets buffed to that high gloss luster. So guitars enter final assembly. We have these bins that the material handlers will uh, assemble in a kit. So they'll put all the tuners. Everything that's gotta get put on that guitar yeah. lives in this book. It's that, yeah, exactly right. The final inspector is, is the final say on, on how the guitar is gonna leave the factory. They get that guitar, they have to give it that, that inspection to make sure that all the hardware is correct, all the control functions are correct, that action is set to our specs and criteria, and, and fit, form, and function is all verified here. So again, you definitely have to be a player to do this job. So, so here you can see Patrick is, is giving it uh, an aesthetic inspection. Once he does that and confirms that there's no issues there, then he'll, he'll start the playability test and electronic control function test. You ever get sick of this stuff? I mean, you're around guitars all day, you go home, you're around guitars all night. You ever get sick of guitars? No, I don't get sick of guitars. I mean, sometimes I don't get to play them as much but I love working on them and you know I have a shop at home and I'll work on them all day here I'll go home and maybe here I'm doing more of the jobs like I said where it's you know more the cat or you know uh, those type of uh, tasks I get home I like Make to tinker yeah. you know so I, I'm working on guitars or winding pickups or doing what I do because I just love doing that stuff but it's a mix of working on them and playing and, and that's just what I do that's all I know yeah you too yeah yeah more history on Gibson or to pick out your next dream guitar, check us out online at Gibson.com. That does it for me. I'm Mark Agnesi. I'll see you guys again next time from another iconic music destination on the next episode of The Scene.